Hi folks, my name is Phil and welcome to Grounded, the series which looks at airlines of yesteryear. This episode will take a look at Euro Cypria Airlines of Cyprus. In the early 1990s, the Cypriot National Airline, Cyprus Airways, was undergoing a number of changes. The airline had become the eighth airline in the world to operate the new fly-by-wire Airbus A320 when they received the first one in 1989, and they were now also using a global reservation system, having joined Sabre. The airline had also found itself back under state ownership, with the Cypriot government owning 80% of the company, and with this came some new direction. Cyprus had been a popular tourist destination for quite some time, going right back to before the Turkish invasion in 1974 and their continued illegal occupation of the north. Despite this, Cyprus didn't have a dedicated holiday airline of its own, and instead relied on foreign charter airlines to bring tourists in from across Europe and beyond. So, in March 1992, Cyprus Airways established a new charter airline. This new airline, Euro Cypriot, would be a wholly owned subsidiary of Cyprus Airways and serve tourist routes that Cyprus Airways, as a full service scheduled airline, wasn't suited to. Euro Cypriot would be based at Larnaca Airport, the busiest of the country's two main commercial airports. Thanks to its close ties with Cyprus Airways, the airline was able to get off to a very quick start, with Euro Cypria taking delivery of its first aircraft, an Airbus A320, in mid-March. This aircraft, along with a second A320 which arrived in April, was leased from Cyprus Airways. They were in fact brand new aircraft ordered by the flag carrier but delivered new to the charter outfit, fresh from the factory. The Euro Cypria livery bore similarities to the new Cyprus Airways livery. Both had grey bellies with an upper white fuselage separated by two cheat lines. Cyprus Airways had dark blue and gold, while Euro Cypria had light blue over dark blue, with some tinkering on the thickness of the lines. The company logo was a wavy blue line over a yellow circle, making for a stylized sea and sun motif, and was featured on the aircraft tail. The airline's inaugural flight took place on March 25, 1992, with an A320 operating a round trip from Larnaca to Birmingham. During their first year, Euro Cypria carried 195,650 passengers on 675 return flights with its two aircraft. The following year, Euro Cypria added another Airbus A320 to bring their fleet to free aircraft. This one, like the other two, was brand new from Toulouse and leased from Cyprus Airways. Unlike, say, a British charter airline which would focus on flying tourists from the UK to a myriad of holiday destinations, Euro Cypria's focus was on bringing folks to Cyprus and as such would serve a number of airports across Western and Northern Europe, primarily the United Kingdom and Germany. Airports served included Birmingham, London Gatwick, Dusseldorf, Munich, Hamburg and Glasgow. Euro Cypria would also introduce flights to Athens connecting Cyprus with the Greek mainland. During the 1990s as Cyprus's only charter airline, Euro Cypria would slowly expand its route network with Zurich, Frankfurt, Manchester and Dublin seeing service from the small carrier. Competition looked on the horizon however when Capital L Airlines was announced in 1999, a subsidiary of the Lewis Group, the Cypriot travel company. Capital L was to launch on January 1, 2000 with free leased aircraft and operate from Larnaca and Paphos to various European destinations. At the time, however, the aviation industry in Cyprus was tightly controlled and Capital L wouldn't be allowed to compete against either Cyprus Airways or Euro Cypria. While this didn't seem to be an issue when the new airline was announced, it all came to naught and the airline never took off. The dawn of the new millennium saw Euro Cypria top the list of European charter airlines for punctuality according to the Air Transport Users Council. The new millennium also brought changes to the skies above Cyprus. The country was in the process of joining the European Union and as such faced many changes across the board, one of which was the liberalisation of the aviation industry. Neither Euro Cypria or Cyprus Airways could be protected from competition any longer. Helios Airways became the first independent and privately owned airline in Cyprus when they began operations in early 2000. Helios had been set up with assistance from Sabre Airways in the UK. It was a charter airline and would become Euro Cypria's main direct competition. Helios is a story for another day, however, so we won't dwell on them today. The spring of 2001 would see Euro Cypria sign a deal with ILFC for four Boeing 737-800 next generation aircraft with deliveries to begin in 2003. In the meantime, however, Euro Cypria added a further two Airbus A320s as a stopgap until the new Boeings could arrive. These two aircraft were second-hand, however, and brought the Euro Cypria fleet to five aircraft. 
It was soon announced that Euro Cypria and Cyprus Airways were to split, something which had been speculated on as soon as the two airlines announced fleet renewals with different aircraft types. The fleet commonality, whilst good from an airline perspective, had been a contentious issue at Euro Cypria. Euro Cypria's pilots had to share the captaincy promotion grid with Cyprus Airways, making it harder for the airline's own first officers to climb the seniority ladder. It had been such a big issue that Euro Cypria's pilots had threatened strike action, but with the A320s and the partnership on the way out, so too was the problem. While the two would now operate as two separate airlines, Cyprus Airways still owned Euro Cypria outright and was itself still under state ownership. The four shiny new Boeing 737-800s arrived during the spring of 2003 and as a result the A320 fleet was phased out with the final two leaving in the summer. These four aircraft all wore a new Euro Cypria livery, a white fuselage with billboard titles. The company logo remained on the tail, however each tail was coloured differently. These tail colours were reflective of each aircraft name, with each one being named after traditional Mediterranean winds. Their first aircraft was named Zephyros and had a dark blue tail. Zephyr is a light wind blowing from the west and is known as the west wind. In ancient Greek mythology, Zephyrus was a god who, like his brother Boreas, the north wind, derived his power over the rest of the winds from Zeus. According to many traditions, the wind was also a carrier of fertilizing powers. Levantes was the second aircraft and wore a light blue tail. Levant is a strong east wind, usually blowing in the autumn and spring. The third aircraft was named Maestros and had a grey tail. Maestros is a small intensity northwest wind that brings coolness during the summer season. The fourth aircraft was named Grecos and had a white tail. Grecos is a northeast wind. It takes its name from the Italian word Greco, meaning Greek, as the wind was blowing from Greece. 2003 also saw Cyprus Airways announce plans to sell 49% of Euro Cypria, with the company revealing that it was in talks with two tour operators who were interested in acquiring a stake in the Cypriot carrier. It was reported that one was in the UK and the other on the continent, as Cyprus Airways was holding its cards close to its chest. The charter arm had become unprofitable following the split from its parent company and in the face of increased competition from stronger travel companies such as MyTravel, Thomas Cook and TUI. Cyprus Airways also needed the cash to help it with another airline venture, the short-lived Hellas Jet over in Greece, but that waste of cash is most certainly a story for another day. The talks over Euro Cypria came to naught, however, and the company remained with Cyprus Airways. In April 2005, Euro Cypria opened its first overseas base, with the airline establishing a base at Heraklion on the Greek island of Crete. Using an Airbus A320 hired in from Cyprus Airways, Euro Cypria would serve 13 destinations in 6 countries from the island as it began to look at revenue streams away from Cyprus. That October, Euro Cypria would establish a base at Sham el Sheikh in Egypt using one of their 737s to operate charter flights between the Red Sea Resort and various points across Europe. 2006 saw the arrival of two more Boeing 737s named Notos and Ipos with pink and green tails respectively. Notos was the god of the south wind and I believe Ipos is a variation of the spelling of Eurus, the east wind and also a wind of storm and is referred to as the saviour of Sparta. Eurus was closely related to Helios, the god of sun. Incidentally, Helios, the airline and Euro Cypria's main competition, would rebrand during the year, becoming Ajet in the wake of the crash of Helios Flight 522. Despite the rebranding, Ajet would collapse by the year's end, though this didn't mean a reduction in competition. If anything, it was worse, as Britain's XL Airways would open a Cypriot base to fill in the gap. XL, previously known as Sabre, had helped establish Helios and would briefly share common ownership under Libra holidays, so the move made perfect sense. Despite the arrival of the two new aircraft, 2006 was a somewhat tough year for Euro Cypria with the airline making a loss of £900,000. Its parent company, Cyprus Airways, was in severe financial distress too, and as a result the Cypriot government acquired Euro Cypria for £13.425 million. Thanks to its new government ownership, Euro Cypria was selected to operate a special charter flight from Cyprus to China. Five Bravo, Delta Bravo, Vita, Levantes would take the president of Cyprus, Tassos Papadopoulos, to China for trade talks. The 737 didn't have the range to operate non-stop, so flew from Larnaca to New Delhi for refuelling, before continuing on to Shanghai. 
The tour also visited Beijing before departing back for Cyprus, again via New Delhi. This was the first flight between the two countries and Euro Cypria tried to celebrate the occasion with special branding inside the cabin as well as souvenir certificates handed out on the flight. In a further bid to increase revenue, Euro Cypria began subleasing some of its fleet out during the quiet winter months. Two 737s joined Sunwing Airlines of Canada, with one departing in December 2006, followed by the second in early January. Cyprus, unlike the majority of Mediterranean destinations, is warm enough to see tourists all year round. However, that wouldn't stop Euro Cypria from facing an excess of capacity and thus the wise move to ship some birds off to Canada. Both aircraft would return in the summer, with one being used to replace the Cyprus Airways Airbus over in Crete. Euro Cypria was always on the lookout for extra revenue streams and began to operate scheduled flights alongside the charter operations. Initially, the airline began with flights from Cyprus to various Greek islands, including Corfu, Santorini and Zakynthos. Flights would soon begin to Tel Aviv, and in July 2007, Euro Cypria would begin service to Russia with a weekly flight to St. Petersburg. As the winter of 2007 approached, Euro Cypria would establish another overseas base, this time in Poland. Using a 737 out of Warsaw, the airline would operate on behalf of a local tour operator, with charter flights across Europe and even further afield with flights to Madeira and even Mombasa over in Kenya. The Warsaw base became operational on November 2, 2007. Two 737s were again shipped out to Canada for the winter, however only one would return in the spring. The other would remain on the Canadian register and instead be chartered to Euro Cypria for the summer. When the global financial crisis hit in 2008, it initially benefited Euro Cypria as Excel Airways, the British airline which had established a base in Cyprus, collapsed in September and thus removed Euro Cypria's biggest direct competitor. Unfortunately, the financial crisis began to bite hard and the following year Cyprus entered a recession in 2009. The financial crisis brought declining passenger numbers as some folks just couldn't afford to travel and combined with some consolidation among Europe's larger travel companies it left Euro Cypria out in the cold. Euro Cypria began 2010 in bad shape with the company needing a huge cash injection to stay afloat. Euro Cypria's operations away from Cyprus had begun to grate with the higher ups in government who were not impressed that the airline was transporting holidaymakers to destinations away from Cyprus. After all, the original aim of the airline was to bring holidaymakers to the island. Despite this, they understood the need to keep the airline in business and agreed a 35 million euro bailout. Things weren't so straightforward, however. Cyprus Airways protested to the government that having two state-owned airlines was unsustainable and that Euro Cypria should be shut down. The government sort of listened and in September 2010 announced that the two airlines would be merged back together just four years after they'd gone their separate ways. Unfortunately, however, Cyprus was now a fully-fledged member of the European Union and following objections raised by an unnamed carrier, this new rescue plan fell through. The European Commission ruled that Euro Cypria must not be merged with Cyprus Airways and must instead be liquidated, much to the rage of Euro Cypria employees and their families. They protested outside the Finance Ministry's main office, throwing red paint at the building before marching on to the Presidential Palace and onward to the Chamber of Commerce. On November the 4th, news broke that appeals to the European Commission had failed and that Euro Cypria was to be shut down with the planned end coming on November the 13th. As expected, this news didn't go down well and Euro Cypria's planned departures to St. Petersburg, Tel Aviv and Germany were all cancelled as according to an airline representative, the crews felt under immense psychological pressure and unable to fly and with that, Euro Cypria was grounded, permanently. So, what went wrong? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Euro Cypria was losing money and under normal circumstances would have gone bankrupt like other airlines. However, it was also a state-owned airline and was being propped up by the Cypriot government. The government, quite rightly, wanted to support the airline as it brought holidaymakers to the airline and tourism was, and still is, one of the backbones of the Cypriot economy. Unfortunately, with Cyprus joining the EU, it now had to abide by EU rules on state aid, and following complaints from an unnamed airline, which every man and his dog knows was Ryanair, for they were always complaining to the EC about state aid, the government support had to be withdrawn and the airline declared bankrupt. 
Now, I could go on and on about the EC rules on state aid and how Ryanair has used them to get numerous flag carriers grounded in the name of fairness, but I won't. Instead, let's look at the reasons why Eurocypria was in such bad shape. Eurocypria was a leisure airline and was focused on bringing in tourists from Northern and Western Europe. Cyprus, however, is located at the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea, resulting in lengthy flight times occupying their small fleet. With most flights being around 4-5 to five hours in duration, it meant that the aircraft would be pretty much tied up for most of the day, maybe operating an extra flight overnight to keep the utilisation up. Most routes were served once per week, so the airline was able to stretch its fleet as much as possible. Eurocypria's management at least understood the difficulties in basing their entire operation in Cyprus and had set up a base in Egypt. This too faced the same problem, which was exacerbated by even longer sector times. The move to open a base in Poland was a wise one. From there, Eurocypria could get more out of its aircraft, with the 737 being able to operate more flights a day due to a mix of longer and shorter sector times and thus make more money. For example, a British charter airline may operate one aircraft on a flight to Portugal in the morning and once it returns at lunchtime, send it back out on a longer trip to Turkey. By basing an aircraft in Poland, Eurocypria were able to try and operate in a similar way. It was just that their main Cypriot operation was dragging them down. In the end, it's very difficult for an airline to successfully base itself in Cyprus. The national carrier, Cyprus Airways, collapsed into bankruptcy a few years after Eurocypria, again, due to an EC ruling against the airline following complaints from Ryanair, but that story is for another day. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, suggestions or criticisms, please do get in touch. If you don't have a YouTube doodah, don't worry, I've got a contact form on my website and I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. I have plenty more episodes in the works, so if you haven't already, why not subscribe to catch them as they land? And as always, thanks for watching.